Network. I'm your host. I'm joined by co-host John, a.k.a. Polya Zapatos, as well as Corey Owen, who currently can't be visible just due to some minor technical issues. Still figuring out how to work this stuff. But in the meantime, as we said, we're going to discuss severance. So if you all want to go ahead and start on the latest discussion, I'll get your pretty faces back up on the screen, and we'll go from there. Yeah. Karen, do you want to open this up uh, as far as your thoughts on episode 8? Yeah, so, I mean, we can start by, so, um, you know, we, we got to, we started, I believe, on um, Irving's, uh, you know, Irving's apartment. Um, so, you know, it, it, it's, uh, you know, we got a little bit of background for, for Irving there. Um, we had, uh, Mark for a final wellness session with Miss Casey. Um, so yeah, um, you know, uh, Mark and Miss Casey have, uh, failed to remember each other as husband and wife. Uh, let's see. She then orders Miss Casey to be sent back down to the testing floor, uh, whose entrance is shown to be the same corridor uh, as in Irving's paintings. Um, meanwhile, MDR celebrates quota. Um, Cobell is fired by the board for withholding knowledge of uh, Heli's suicide attempt. Um, the MDR team prepares for Dylan to remotely awaken them on the, the outside. Haley kisses Mark before departing. Mark's um, Audi attends Rickon's book party and tells uh, Cobell as uh, Miss uh, Savig that uh, he plans to quit uh, Lumon. Uh, Corbell herself feeling betrayed by the company encourages him to do so. Uh, Dylan receives a waffle party as, resort, uh, as a reward for meeting Kova, uh, Quota, uh, in which uh, he dons a, uh, a kind of a weird head there, sitting with a, a replica of uh, Kara's bedroom uh, in perpetuity, uh, like in the perpetuity wing, while. Um, you know, while the dances are, you know, while there's all kinds of weird dancing in front of them. Um, let's see, Dylan le uh, leaves midway uh, to access the security office and activates the overtime contingency to awaken Mark, uh, Irving, and Helly's innies in the outside world. So, a lot of stuff happened here. Um, as I expected, we were going to see innies on the outside world, um, you know, a, a fair bit uh, now. Um, I don't know. I have a feeling that what we're seeing here in more than a little bit is we're starting to see, um, kind of the, 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 what isn't working for the, uh, like what's not going to work and like the dangers of the severance side of things, because clearly, you know, although I'm not entirely sure, because I, I, I'll be honest, I had a little bit of difficulty following all the nuances of this episode. But yeah, same. It, it seems like you did a great overview, um, though. I'll give you that. Yeah, that was oh, top notch. That pretty much just summarized the entire episode. All right, moving on. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, keep going though. You're no, doing um, I was gonna say, um, this is why I, I we bring you back. The, the whole. Oh, thank you. Um, the whole Miss Corbell thing. I, I think there's. I think there's way more going on with her than than we know like that she's been some sort of prototype monitor or what have you and somehow it's screwing up and that's why she's going you know downstairs if you will um i feel like they're gonna wind up reprogramming her or making some sort of arrangement alterations to her which was another thing i suggested that they might wind up doing is is resetting somebody so i feel like that that may be our, our target of that. So I feel like some things were kind of confirmed, but in ways I didn't expect. Yeah, I agree. It seems like there were a lot of our theories being confirmed in terms of the big bad is showing up the, or the great conflict of the, of the season. But at the same time, how that conflict is going to go feels even more unknown, even though we know we're right at the part where it feels like it's going to start. Like, the way that the episode ended with uh, Miss Cobell telling Mark to get out 
right as he's about to be turned back to his innie, really felt like it was going to do something... Like, it feels like he's going to mess everything up. Because is Miss Cobell going to side with them knowing that he changed? Or is he going to be continuously afraid of her? Like, is he actually going to cause... Is this all going to change all the plans? And is that... Is somebody else orchestrating this? Because it really felt like... The invitation to Miss Cobell may have messed up all of their plans, but then Miss Cobell's opinion of the company is now similar to their innies. And so, what I want to know is like, is there a mastermind setting this up to confuse everybody and thus, you know, restart the program? So, it felt very open ended, even though we are still like pulling into the end. And, yeah, and I don't and, know, I still stand by my statement that we've got a mole in there somewhere and that's who's actually pulling the strings. Yeah, I agree with that statement a ton now more than ever because it feels like they're being moved and manipulated without any... Like, I feel like the mole isn't somebody we've met or it is somebody we've only met in passing throughout the series. I don't think it's one of the four anymore. Yeah, I found the sorry, ending. Pete, you were oh, sorry. I found the I found the ending like I knew I, the the way that would like the pacing kind of slowed down about halfway through the episode, and I was like, I, he's gonna like flip them on, and then credits are gonna roll, and sure enough, that's what we got, <laughs> which was like, yeah, go figure. Um, I honestly, I I thought that the we're we're gonna get a satisfying ending. Um, I'm de- this show has been brilliant from episode one on. Uh, there's definitely a lot of weird implications with uh, who this Kier guy is, and it, it, it's it's there, there's a lot telling in Patricia Arquette's character just losing her her losing everything over it. This obviously was a huge betrayal. So it is interesting to see, is she going to utilize the fact that Mark is about to come back to consciousness or back to switch back to his any and is, yeah, is she going to help him or is she going to go against him? And that's like, based off of the outburst, you kind of lean more towards, oh, well, she's probably going to, you know, going to turn on the company and, and, and go with, go not work against them. Right. Or, Maybe that's just, you know, typical red herring type of writing where it's like, oh, yeah, it looks like she's going to get a redemption arc, right? And then, like, at the last second, no, she's going to turn on him. I don't know. I I like that this show kind of has followed our theories, but it's also really done a good job of just being its own sort of show. And it's it's definitely thrown some twists that I, I didn't think we were going to start. Not only was we were going to start with Irving, but why is Irving painting that hallway? Like, that just created a whole new mess of questions. John, it looks like you got a thought there. Yeah, that kind of... Like, Irving's role seems different. Uh, especially now, with all of that being said, it feels like Irving paint is the one painting all of these paintings. Which means he's a much larger asset to the entire the entire mission of the company, whatever it may be. Uh, the fact that the paintings are both done by Irving and then found by Irving and searched by Irving, why is he why is his memory kind of bleeding? but very like very clearly he feels like it's more of like a creative thing. Like well, he's, it's a, his muse is talking to him. Yeah, and I think I think there's a big a big detail that they just kind of like they didn't it's it's almost like they kind of intentionally glossed over it, where she's watching the end result of of Mark and his supposedly dead wife interact, and she's convinced that oh they forgot each other they didn't even recognize each other yet, um, the the counselor lady 
uh, Mark's, Mark's dead wife, actually says something along the lines of, she's like, I was the happiest when I was with you guys. And then she goes off on, oh, it's because we spent eight hours together. Oh, but my first thought when she said that was like, yeah, because you subconsciously know who that is. Something in your mind, even though it's been cut, has has some pull like in your body your your body's mind so to speak the subconscious knows that you're in the presence of somebody that you trust and so it's like that that was the implication i got from it was oh she's she knows but she just doesn't know and he knows but he just doesn't know either and of course he's distracted by heli as well so it's it's going to be an interesting resolution to to this episode and I don't know. What do you guys think for a season finale? Like, are we going to get a cliffhanger ending? I think we're probably going to get, I would say, like a 25% of a resolution. Like, we're going to get enough information now to understand at least a little bit of the score. But then, yeah, we're going to 100% be left in a situation where, um, you know, the the project is failed and they've decided to re-sever the entire department or something along those lines and basically do a memory wipe of the the innies to in order to get them back on task and i feel like that's why irving is going to be super important because somehow the impressions that he's been getting through this are bleeding through so he's going to be the the key to them getting back on track to solving the the greater issues of what's going on at this company. I definitely don't feel like we're going to be left completely in the dark. Like, you know, the, it gets right to the big fight and then it goes to credits and says come back for season two. But I'm getting more of the feeling that it is going to lean more towards opening the room so like we've got the macrodot team we know them but i think what we're about to see is everybody gets reshifted and they all have new roles in the company so as to because like i get the feeling that the macrodot team is the most likely to continuously up like revolt based off of like the photos that we've seen, based off of the story and the lore we keep hearing about. And the fact that the therapist was once a part of the Macrodot team. And now she's not, but she remembers, but they don't seem to ever discuss it. Like the rest of the team doesn't really seem to remember her being a part of the team. And that feels like, like that's kind of tying to how we're gonna build season two is that like i feel like it's gonna end with another resever but we're gonna get more irvings like how many times has irving been resevered and that's why his brain is melting that's the kind of thing i'm starting to think we're leading towards i wonder how much of this show has been talking about the season two conflict without telling us it's talking about that that's a very good point and i uh i don't know and it <laughs> uh there's so many implications that that still we, we, this show could go anyway any any kind of direction oh I forgot my stage light um i think that i think and this is just my prediction is the last you know however it goes down Somehow, I think the last scene of the movie, or the movie, the show is going to end with Mark waking up on the table, and and then it's that's that's gonna be it. He's been he's been reset, and and then that's that's gonna be your your hook for season two. Is is here it is. You know they 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 won right? Wrong. They only thought they won. And, and I think that's probably going to be one of the big draws. But I don't know. This show has done a really good job of just kind of not like necessarily going against what we theorized, but kind of kind of like, yeah, you guys are kind of on the right track, but you're also not. And that's really what I think makes it a great story is it's not going out of its way to subvert expectations. But it's like the only, the only correspondence we've had regarding the goats 
sense is just that, oh, maybe it's the goats that lay the eggs. Nobody's... There's been no more implication as to why that guy was there, what his purpose is. It, it's, it was just like kind of like, yeah, that was weird. Moving on. So that might come back. I, I, I don't know. Shows uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I absolutely... Say. Yeah, I mean, I absolutely love the fact that this isn't subverting our expectations. It's playing to them, but also keeping it interesting by not being predictable. Yeah. It, it's skirting that very, very fine line of, I'm keeping you interested by being sort of what you thought it was, but just enough outside of it that you're still guessing at it. And I think that's fantastic. That is quality writing. Yeah, I really agree. I Honestly, the way... I'm starting to really feel about this show is a lot along the lines of Game of Thrones in the earlier seasons where you would watch it one time through and you'd be like, okay, I think I understand the whole story and what's coming in the next couple of seasons. But every time you would watch a new season or new episodes, all of your theories would either be close or completely unfounded and then the season later they would come back and it's like no they were founded just completely delayed and that's what i feel like this show really focused on is like we're gonna tell you the whole series in season one without giving anything away so like our like the fact that we all kind of felt like this could be mystery box writing for like five episodes tells me how much they put an effort into not letting you know what they're doing even as they're doing it like we watched the whole season uh, like we have been we've been watching the whole season and we keep feeling nowhere near as close as we were but also nowhere like it it, it keeps building on its questions the questions keep coming and they keep getting more in depth like i care more and more about this world even though i feel like i understand it almost a hundred percent less than when we started yeah absolutely no, it's uh the show continues to amaze me and and like i said so curio and you have any specific you've been pretty good and and some of your predictions have uh, have been fulfilled so to speak so you have any any more uh, ideas for what the uh, season finale is going to hold for us well, I do think that we're going to have to deal with the budding relationship that we've got kind of going here between Mark and Hallie and Mark's ex-wife, I, I want to say not necessarily, um, you know, in existence, right? I, I feel like we're going to have some sort of, you know, relationship triangle moment where he's going to realize that, oh no, his wife is alive. But there's also Heli here that he's starting this relationship with. So I think that's going to come to a head at some point, And I think that's going to be a great moment. Um, you know, I, I, and it really does beg some interesting questions when you've got multiple people living in the same body. Like, what happens with relationships? If you were to, say, have an office romance, your innie's having an office romance while your Audi is married... Like, that's a weird scenario to be in, right? But it's another great example of the writing playing with those ideas of what is and isn't possible in these sort of scenarios. So I definitely think we're building to a little bit of a relationship triangle moment. Um, for those who have watched uh, Babylon 5, one of the, the main characters, um, it, it's a major plot point in the first season, that his wife had, had died on an... On, uh, mission to an alien planet to look at artifacts and when he just starts getting in good with um his main love affair for the series she comes back seemingly from the dead to try to recruit him to the bad guy's position of how things go and i feel like that's a very real possibility that we're going to get something very similar to that here yeah so I that's my, my my main prediction yeah, I mean, there's definitely a lot of a lot of implications that have since uh, come up because of the difference of relationships. I was kind of like, sort of expecting. Uh, what I was kind of when I was watching Irving's bit, I was like, part of me was going, oh, I wonder either one of two things: either it's gonna turn out that he and Christopher Walken's character are either together or like they're friends and 
maybe they would have even gone so far as as to as to if they really wanted to get creative with it, they could have had uh, Irving turn out to have a wife, and then that would have thrown a whole nother. But that probably would have been too much of a concept to explore, like you know, your guinea brain being one way, and then you know, maybe a little bit too much of a concept worth worth exploring. But I was I was like, I wonder if they're gonna like really play with this, and they did with the paintings. That in of itself has a lot of crazy implications about what, how, where is he getting, if he's never seen this hallway, where has he seen it before? Because that's not his way to work. That we, You know, he, he rides the same elevator that everyone else does. So why has he seen that? How does he know that that exists? So, any final, uh, any final thoughts with Severance before we move on to our next, uh, our next segment? Is Cobell gonna use they're waking up as her key back into the castle <laughs> that's like you brought it up in terms of redemption arc like is she going to redeem herself but according to who like the people that were severed supposedly were completely willing and the innies are starting to be unwilling but that's also just due to workplace abuse more than it is to like like they're not they're not exactly revolting against the entire system they're revolting against the fact that they feel like children in a mouse trap and i wonder where that's like i wonder how much that fight actually drives to an actual like revolt versus a pseudo union that gets quote like squashed it's really hard to decide if this this is going to be like the beginning of the downfall of the company or an explanation as to why the company is so successful or it can even be even further you know to break more walls and barriers so to speak there's the implication that the that that Patricia Arquette's character is the actual experiment that the board is doing the entire time and that everyone else doesn't really actually have a part to play. They're just trying to see what they can get away with with her in that. So, I I mean, it could go either way. Carrion, any final thoughts? Yeah, just maybe one. Um, and that's the potential that Cobell might actually be... Um, you... I think you might be onto something with Cobell using this whole scenario to to get ahead uh, instead of being redeemed, at least in in the audience's eyes, but to to really more wrestle control. And I feel like what I would like to see, I don't know if this is going to happen, but what I'd like to see is Cobell, you know, manages to get into the get get to the secret, find out the secret as to why all this is going on, and suddenly realize how vitally important it actually is and then suddenly flip sides and become very much a corporate you know the the pro corporate person in the group and try to get everybody back on on mission i think that would be a very fascinating way to do it like the truth of the situation is so horrifying and so these people are so needed to be doing this oh wait a minute no we actually do need to you know, straighten up and get back to work and stop screwing around. So, yeah, I, that's how I'd like to see it. But definitely. All right. Well, I'm. 